Following on from the last video, I had my metacarpal motors, CMC joint mechanisms for the thumb, fourth and fifth metacarpal bones, and the next thing I needed to do was design a wrist mechanism. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the design decisions I made for the wrist, and then I'm going to talk about how I integrated all of the mechanisms into a reasonably congruent palm. So the wrist then, first of all. Some of you guys might be disappointed to see that I haven't gone with the spherical anti-parallelogram mechanism that I talked about in the wrist biomechanics video, but I did in fact design a prototype using this mechanism. Compared to the DLR hand that I was taking inspiration from, my design needs to be a lot smaller and I don't have access to a CNC machine or anything like that, so in the end I just couldn't get any of the linkages thick enough that I'd be confident about them holding up the entire hand, at least not without making it too big or restricting the range of motion. The DLR hand is designed to be super robust, which does come at the cost of a reduced range of motion and that's very apparent in the wrist, but what I really want to build is a hand that can move dexterously, quickly and fluidly. I'm not totally abandoning that idea though, I think that once I've built a reliable full prototype and a way to control it, then I'd love to explore some new mechanisms and refinements. So the current wrist design that I'm using borrows quite heavily from the shadow hand. It's a simple double hinge which uses cables and pulleys like the fingers and clips onto the rest of the palm on one of the axles. On the other axle, I actually have a built-in mount for the cable sheaths so that the cable exits in the right orientation to reach its pulley. In my resin printing adventures, I also wanted to try printing some different types of snap fit to try and save weight and complexity. So although I think it's not the most sensible design, I went with this snap fit bearing mount and it seems like it works really well. One thing that I did to make it work was to put the bearings in before I actually cured the resin because I was worried that it would be too brittle and snap. But as it turns out, it's really not as brittle as I thought. As soon as I can though, I'm going to change it so that the axle is the component with the snap fit as opposed to this bearing retaining ring because I think that'll make it a lot more robust. Overall, the wrist seems to function well, although you will notice that it is quite slow. For prototyping purposes, I used very small pulleys on my servos and having much larger pulleys at the pivot point meant that there was a big loss in speed. It just means I can evaluate the mechanism without having to worry about it getting out of control. So obviously in the final design, I'll either use faster servos or bigger pulleys at the servo in order to get more speed out of it. Actually, one of the differences between my design and the shadow hand's wrist is that they use a big mega pulley for the lateral motion of the wrist, which obviously gives it a ton of torque but detracts a lot from the speed. For my purposes, I need a faster design because my main focus, as I mentioned before, is biomimetic motion over strength, at least for the time being. So you'll also notice that I'm not using any feedback potentiometers in the wrist. And that's because I feel like this mechanism is big and robust enough that I don't expect there to be much play in the joints at all. I'm using thicker cable, bigger pulleys and bigger servos compared with other joints in the hand. So I don't anticipate I'll have any calibration issues. If it turns out I'm wrong though, it shouldn't disrupt the existing design too much if I need to slap some sensors in there. So the CMC joint for the 4th and 5th metacarpals was basically unchanged from the last video other than the additional linkages I mentioned I wanted to add. It was really tricky to work out how to arrange the linkages to allow everything to move smoothly, including the thumb, so some of the shapes have ended up sort of funky because they're structured in a way so as not to collide with anything as they move. The outputs from the prototype I showed in the last video were altered to merge smoothly into the metacarpal motors, one on the front and one on the back, again to avoid collisions. I had some very minor issues with misalignment of the metacarpals, but I know it's just because I need to improve the way the two halves of the gearbox connect. Overall, I'm really happy with this mechanism. It needs some work, but it does appear to move very smoothly, and I'm really happy with the way that they move in that 3 to 1 ratio that I mentioned by which I mean the 5th metacarpal moves uh, 30 degrees in total and the 4th only moves 10. Also just a note on the servos that I'm using for this prototype. This is a Parallax standard servo which has a pretty much identical form factor to the MG996R. In the CMC joint itself I'm using gears from a repurposed MG996R but for testing purposes this Parallax servo is a lot quieter and smoother and I haven't had one fail yet. If nothing else, they make a lot less noise, so that's always a nice advantage. So looking at the thumb now, this CMC mechanism is becoming a little bit of a pain, mainly because it's so incredibly difficult to assemble every time I make a new prototype. 
I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the mechanism, it's just that there's a few issues that mean I'm getting a ton of friction on the bottom pulley and the other pulley isn't moving great either because the mechanism is so fiddly that I can't quite get the cable tight enough, which is as much of an issue with the mechanism of the thumb joint itself as it is an issue with the servos. On my to-do list is to work out a better system for the actuation. I could really do with a reliable testing platform which I could use to quickly test cable actuation systems without having to mess around, much in the same way that I made this servo tester as a quick little project and I actually use it all the time. But at the same time, I also want to work out a decent system for the servos in the final design, which needs to be very compact but could also be modular which might mean that I could use it to test prototypes. I also want to talk a little bit about the palm in general and how I linked all of the subsystems together. I really like the way that the palm component looks and it is nice that I can assemble the hand and then just clip it onto the wrist mechanism, but I've had quite a bit of trouble working out how to join the top and bottom halves of the design because they also support the thumb mechanism, so they have to be really well aligned. I added some long screws, but I have to have them at really awkward angles to stay clear of all the moving parts without making them protrude too much. Um, so that's something that I need to rethink at some point. It would be quite easy to just add some screws at sensible angles quite far away from the centre of the design, but obviously I need everything to be as compact as possible to try and stay within real human proportions. So to sum up, I feel like I've made quite a lot of progress and I've now prototyped every joint in the hand. And I also have a very long list of little tweaks that I need to make. My next objective is pretty much to build the final prototype of the mechanical frame, which I'll use to develop all the programming and whatever I use as the control method, after which I'll build the ultimate armoured prototype in all its glory. So I definitely feel like I've reached an important milestone in the project and now the focus is going to shift to optimizations and refinements rather than conceptualization and prototyping, which is what it's been mainly up to this point. So as always, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. We've recently reached the fair support goal and it feels like everything is getting moving nicely. So a very big thank you and I'll see you all in the next video.